One of the hardest things to figure out as an aspiring artist is how do you plan your illustrations? And I think a big part of this is what should your plans look like? What should your thumbnails look like? How much detail should you put in and how much should you play around with color? How much should you figure things out? It's easy to lose a lot of the energy if you overwork the planning phase of an illustration. But on the other hand, you need to plan it. You need to really figure out what is going to be there so that you can start to add your secondary forms, your tertiary forms, and really sort of bring the detail up to a good level. Now, someone who I think does a really good job of this is Frank Frazetta. And what I want to do in this video is check out this book and look specifically at how he transitions from the rough idea phase to the plan with sort of a detailed plan or thumbnail, often in color of his images. And more than that, I want to look at how the way we plan our images actually influences the final look and you know, a lot of our overall style. And I think it's really important to understand that the process from the very beginning to the very end often defines a big aspect of the way our images look. So this is going to be a mix of a book review and just thinking about thumbnails, planning our images and appreciating how good Frank Frazetta was at this. Hopefully you'll join me. Let's jump in and get started. All right, welcome to The Drawing Codex. My name is Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years. And on this channel, we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, embracing the challenge of drawing and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. Now, if you'd like to learn more about illustration and picture making, you can check out my free illustration mini workshop. It charts my journey going from an amateur to a professional. And I talk a lot about really important issues such as how to get more detail and polish in your work, how to plan your images, create thumbnails, and also a few thoughts on how to approach being a professional artist. As I said, it's free. The link will be in the description. Go check it out if that's something you're interested in. Okay, so the book that we are looking at today is Frazetta Sketchbook 2 by Spurlock and Frazetta. And this is a really good, well-crafted, well-put-together explanation of a lot of Frank Frazetta's process. Now, it is worth mentioning before we go ahead that there are some artistic nudity scenes and, and drawings in this book. Often the, the characters are drawn without clothes on in the preliminary roughs, and Frazetta was known for drawing you know, some sort of naked women. So if that's something you're not interested in seeing, then maybe give this one a miss. Firstly, we can just look at, I guess, what was Frank Frazetta's process for coming up with these ideas. And here, I think we get a pretty good example. This is from one of Frank Frazetta's first real sort of illustration jobs where he took on creating a cover. Um, and you can see that there's a mix of creating these little kind of sketches where I guess there's the initial ideation and then there's an actual plan and then he tends to kind of finish the image. And we can really sort of see this same idea progressing basically through all of these different, um, you know, sort of pages and examples. And again, I think it, it's worth mentioning how good this book is at displaying these things and, and kind of putting them all down. Um, it, it is really sort of good to have this. A lot of effort has actually been put into finding these little sketches in his collections around the place and then showing how they actually appeared as um, book covers, which I think is really, really important. But you can see, I, and, and this is my sort of understanding of it, is we tend to follow this process. There's these little sketches and exploratory versions of what it could like look like. And we sort of tend to end up with a fairly complete, normally in, in watercolor, version of what the actual cover will look like. And, and what you can see is that frequently the cover actually looks very close to whatever that kind of initial little watercolor is. So there seems to be a, a rough ideation um, process and probably looking at um, Frazetta's life drawings is, is probably like an, another thing to, to sort of do, but it, it was worth noting if you look at this sketchbook, just how good his uh, drawing from life was. But typically we have this 
process where there is a little sketch and often these come in various forms but we always tend to end up with something that looks pretty sort of you know very very close to the finish and I think this is worthwhile looking at as something that, that you could do and I think what we'll talk about as we progress through here is just how the way that you actually create these defines the finished look but this is a rough idea of Frazetta's overall process we have these often quite sort of soft little drawings um, quite loose ideating playing around trying to find trying to find the right look and often you know once that look is kind of found then there is a, a watercolor rough color version of that created and I think again the most important thing to note that we're going to unpack is that the finish looks very similar in many cases to that initial little sketch but yeah and you can see lots and lots of different examples that's not the the only reason for this book to exist right it, it is mainly a just a sort of showing of his um, sketches and, and all the different sort of things that he did but again he is seeing a, another good example classic um, cover to uh, issue of creepy back in the day and here you have uh, yeah this sort of nice little watercolor rough and the the finish looks um, you know it's not quite as um, sort of cartoony as this but you can see that the idea is there right the strength of that is there there were some other poses um, explored but this is kind of what it ended up up as so I think something to pay attention to is that really all the important aspects of the composition are included in the thumbnail and this is not necessarily the only way to create a thumbnail but if you are working traditionally this is something that look is, is probably going to be very helpful to, to do and, and if you look at a lot of people who tend to work very traditionally they they do have a really sort of detailed thumbnail planning phase now you could call this a preliminary rough you could call it a thumbnail uh, whatever it is again these are these are not tiny right but um again I, th I think it sort of functions as the first sort of stage um of of the drawing um and again you could sort of call it whatever you want but i think we still can look at it as being that kind of like little sort of smaller thumbnail preliminary version of of what is going on now i think just looking at that and understanding that in, in many cases everything is kind of worked out to a certain degree at the thumbnail there's a lot of graphic blocking a lot of the anatomy a lot of the shadow patterns are actually included in these little thumbnails and I think that's the first thing to just understand is this sort of style of working even though the finish looks very loose and painterly and as I've often said, Frazetta's work is has this kind of style where you imagine that it was kind of created in this fluid, unplanned way, right? It's often it's often so completely crazy and, and sort of expressive that, that it has a feeling like it just kind of leapt off the page. But in most cases, there was actually a really solid plan. And I think it's probably fair to imagine that a big reason that he was able to be so expressive and abstract in many ways with the finish is because it does seem like a lot of these things were actually planned out pretty well and here you can see again there's a really good solid plan of the shadow structures and all of these fundamental things obviously not all of the anatomy is worked out but i think the graphic composition is really sorted there's not a lot left up to imagination there's not a lot that tends to kind of appear out of nowhere onto the finished page now i think that the second thing to look at is that the simplification is something that translates and i think this is really really critical because it's important to appreciate that your overall process from start to finish is connected and i think the interesting thing that i note when i look at these is that really in most cases like in this case you can see he kind of abandoned the graphic blocking of the sort of girls back here that got a little bit more rendered but in most cases all of these little shadow shapes that are defined quite quite well in the thumbnail because naturally you need to work in quite a graphic way 
these are translated very carefully to the finished image. And I think often one of the things that people appreciate about Frazetta's work so much is this translation of these different sort of aspects. And I think some of these images are a little bit less like that. But I think the interesting thing is that his work has this real sort of graphic nature to it that I think actually comes from these thumbnails. And I think you can see that a big part of what he's trying to do with these preliminary roughs is really block in all these big shapes and sort of figure those out. And it's interesting that that's often what we experience with his work is that it has this graphic nature. It feels like you could understand it from across the room. And, and that is because often it would work and read at a much smaller scale. So if we look at, again, the sort of different, you know, versions of the same thing and, and how that was kind of handled, you can really see that often it's all there in the little sketches and the way that he would sketch carries across to the overall style. And so he's really bringing along a lot of these really sort of chunky graphic shapes when he does the finish. And I think this is, this is so important to grasp is that the process that you use, the way that you would block things in, the fidelity with which you do it is something where that's going to change potentially the finished look of your image. And you do really need to play around with this because you can drastically change the final look of your style by planning at a particular fidelity. And if you do sort of just translate your sketch and sort of really sort of trace it and figure out what those big shapes are, you can get a very different overall look to things. And I think this is something that's often not appreciated because, again, you know, we're, we're sort of imagining like, oh, we kind of add all this detail or, you know, again, the thumbnail can sort of be done in any way, shape or form. But the fidelity that you do the thumbnail is going to define the graphic feel of the finished image. And you see artists who don't plan this way, artists who do maybe have a, a much more detailed drawing phase, they tend to add more detail. And it's maybe harder for them to mass all of these shadow shapes and get this kind of really rough feel. But you can see that the general idea here, right, of if we can kind of go a little bit sort of closer to see some of these things in detail, right, you, you can see that all of the information there is fully is fully there, right? All of these shadow shapes, the way that they kind of work, the way that they function, he's kind of really figuring out there's going to be cast shadow down here. You're not really going to be able to see the face fully. And the way that the leg, these leg shapes, these big sort of chunky shapes, that you, you may have a hard time actually doing that if you, you know, were trying to add a lot more detail. So just something that's worth considering is that the way that you actually do plan your images, I think, can have a massive impact. And if you are looking for a style that is more graphic, that has this kind of strong breakup, then I think working with the thumbnail and planning at a simple stage and then taking that to the final can be a really, really good way to do that. Something also, just before we go to consider here, is that Frazetta is known for being an artist who really pushed back against the idea of needlessly just producing thumbnails for clients. He really viewed himself, as far as my understanding goes, as being someone who aspired to be more of an auteur, of an artist. And in pursuit of that, he would often really just try and say, hey, like, I just want to paint whatever I want. Uh, I know best. Uh, you're hiring Frazetta for Frazetta, and, and that's kind of what you're going to get as opposed to, you know, sort of doing a whole bunch of little thumbnails and, you know, letting the art director pick which one. Um, it's interesting that even though he had that attitude of like, I am going to be the one to make this and his art does feel like often he just kind of, you know, painted it in one go is that the ideation process that he had, it was based on a very strong illustration process of creating, you know, very um, rough sketches, moving to a plan, preliminary sort of thumbnail, um, whatever you want to call it. And that this is for him, right? So even when you're looking at him creating images where he's saying, 
I'm not even really going to show anyone the thumbnail, right? It's just you, you're getting a Frazetta and that's what you, that's what you ask for. You want me. So that's what you're going to get. E even when he kind of has sort of said that, um, and it's, it's also, it's also worth noting just before you go that, um, I think one of the things that makes Frazetta such, um, an artist who, who can really be so expressive with those kind of oil style images is that he spent a lot of time drawing um, sort of funny animal comics really um, and and that, I think that gives him a lot of that sort of ability to be very expressive but that even though he was maybe not even showing people a lot of these thumbnails or he didn't want to I think it was still a major part of his process and I think as I said like breaking things down in this particular way thinking through the image and having a process to do that even if he's not necessarily, you know, doing it to, to share that process and show it to people, it's still a major part of the way that he created images. And I think that's something you can take away as well, is that you don't necessarily have to think about a full creative process where you're doing thumbnails, you're planning things. This doesn't necessarily have to be something that you're only doing as a professional this can be something that you do for yourself because as I said, it can actually massively change and define the look of your work overall. And I think one of the things you can do is experiment with the way and the method that you ideate and the way you transfer that to a finished image and how that changes the look and the feeling of the finished image and your experience creating it. So anyway, I think those are just a, a couple of quick thoughts that I sort of had when I was, uh, you know, sort of looking at this. I was looking at this the other day. And uh, yeah, I think this is a, a great book. Um, really does a good example and um, um, job of sort of explaining the process of Frazetta. And as I keep saying, I think he's such a good example of someone who he may have a style that feels a little bit dated now, but he really did push a lot of things forward and was an avant garde real sort of artist's artist back in the day. And I think his process should be um, looked at. And I think there's still a lot we can learn from sort of looking at that process. So anyway, hopefully that was interesting. Let me know if you have any thoughts, cool Frazetta stories to share in the comments down below. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.